because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up, Harry. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt rings. Right, the bouncer's guilt rings. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. Oscar Bevis, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by the last son, Ed, which joins me here in Bolton. Mate, I feel like we haven't done something in a very long time. It might be, do you remember them Sheffield car park dust-up shows? I think you might have been one of them. I feel like you've, either you've been avoiding me. I definitely ain't been avoiding you. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm heavily avoided, so I don't I know. I'm not in the business of avoiding no one, Oscar. Um, no, nah, I think, when was it last time? Was it um, the Canelo one? In the, oh, yeah, yeah, in the gym? Yeah, in the gym, yeah. I think that was the last one I can really remember, but probably one since then. Um, yeah, you know, I've just been... Just been here. It's been, it's been a bit quiet, really. UK boxing has not been, not been massive. It's not been like mad the first three months. What do you reckon? I think it's one of them times where, and obviously working for IFL, I suppose I experience it a lot firsthand. There's a lot more talking points outside the ring, or there has been for the last six months, than fights in the ring that we're talking about at the moment. Yeah, and I think at that point it just becomes people engaging in boxing through quick articles and responses to things. It's not really building and sort of fleshing out what is the sport that we love. I think we end up getting too caught and too obsessed with certain talking points and scandals. And unfortunately, it's like you could do all the good in the world. You could, you know what I mean? And that will never catch the shine that, you know, two foul drug test in a four month period of time would do. You know what I mean? It's like, it's unfortunate, but at the same time, it is. So, I don't know. I think there just needs to be a lot of fights that get over the line and, and a lot of storylines that get tied up. And I think it's really tight. If it's not 2023, I can't imagine it going on to 2024 and 2025. There's so many. There is so many at like the top. Like Everything apart from the women's weights and about like two or three weights is just so just absolutely cluttered everywhere. Like scattered the belts and the, the meaningful fights and the platforms people are locked behind and, and just to be a boxing fan like because i don't like taking money out of boxers pockets like i'm a subscription whore i'm talking oscar outside of all like the netflixes and disney pluses i'm talking i've got bt i've got sky i've got the zone i've got fight uh fight zone i've got every single which way yeah, the, the pay-per-views that come in whether they're <laughs> the biggest fights in the world or the KSI show, I'm watching them, you know what I mean? Because obviously when you get the boxing bug, once you get hooked in, you just wait for the next bit of boxing to come around. But like, it's hard to keep up. Like some fights I'm missing or like a fight in America, you can't watch it. Um, now, but shout out to The Zone and Channel 5 for their little link up for this show today, bear in mind. And I know The Zone obviously did say that they was willing to work with everyone. And I know they did also, you know, get the, um, Sky Channel, so, but I do think having sort of all boxing in a in a reachable place under one sort of banner of some which way, I know it's impossible to a certain degree, but people just need to start working together because if boxing's not big enough, it's not big enough for like, everyone to like, fall out of each other and, you know, for someone that is really behind the scenes, like in the sense of, I know what fights pretty much won't ever happen just because of the people that are involved in their careers. And if he don't get on with him, that fight's not happening. But maybe if they speak to that, oh, it's exhausting, Oscar. It is. Really, that really is. It's so, like, it's not even that political. Like, I wish it was more political. <laughs> it's more like... A lot of it's, like, just a lot of dick more, swinging and egos and... Yeah, it's more like bitter ex-birds and fucking... He cheated and, oh, my God, now she's had a baby with him. That's what it's like. Like... I don't know. I think all the promoters should just have to sit in a room in one big circle, one delegate and, and their assistant. <laughs> you know what I mean? And have like a global boxing union or something. The boxing version of the Geneva Convention and filmed, of course, on IFL TV. I don't know about IFL, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, maybe the Sunny Showtime TV network are coming soon. Um, nah, but ge genuinely, the, the, the division is killing our sport, unfortunately. It kills the... Um, the competitive matchups, the, the the flow of the the season, as it were, like there's just no real consistency. And what happens is boxing fans are left feeding off crumbs, and then there's only so many crumbs you can get excited for. And then when that one fight that you were sort of holding out for doesn't, eventually it just turns people away from the boxing. Like how many times have you heard that someone lost interest or they were never fighting each other or or whatnot? So I don't know. Hopefully, 
boxing gets his head together and people start working together. Because if not, I think everyone's just shooting himself in the foot, to be honest. No, 100%. I couldn't have said that better myself. And that's why there'll be two talking points in this interview that kind of relate to fights happening or not happening. And one of them is involving yourself. Um, what is going on and what's next? You kind of still teetering on the edge of a couple of different directions, waiting for people to approach you. Like, I think people will be looking and going, there's a Canelo card soon, Martinez, is that ever going to happen? Sort of thing. So just kind of in your words, tell us where it all stands right now. Well, to the best of my knowledge, even though I'm in a voluntary position and I've been calling for the fights and trying to make the fights, it's gone again that Bam Rodriguez is tied up, decided to fight a WBO vacant title against an opponent no one's ever heard of. Um, why, I don't know. Maybe he didn't want to sit at a negotiation table with me as the champion number one and him as the, the challenger. I get that, but I'll be real, I'm not someone that... I need 70 30. Do you know what I mean? I'm not. I'm not. It's not. Like, the opportunity, the, the, the moment, the, the chance to be genuinely great and considered great as something means all way much more than an extra 100,000 or an extra 50,000 or whatever you might fall out of a fight from. Like, in simple terms, I suppose, if you are to be cemented as a great in the sport, that extra 100,000 comes from what comes beyond your victory in a big fight. 100%, but it's, it's like, like money, like money's money, like okay it's important, longevity, family, but I didn't get in, I didn't start boxing for money, like I didn't stop when I was 14 and come back seven months later as a little fat kid and then win a national title two months later, for money, I realised at 14 years old when I was being able to go and do anything I wanted, live how I wanted, go where I wanted, as like a little young man, because I lived with my mum at this point, I found my way back to the boxing gym because I realised at that age, that there was nothing else for me out there. There was no, there, there, there was nothing else that I wanted to do with my life, and I, and I never turned back since. So even now, I probably could be earning no money. I could probably be earning whatever. I could probably still be amateur, and I'd probably still be fighting, because it it, it out, <laughs> I don't just box to earn a living. Yeah. But fortunately, boxing has really helped me earn a killing. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like you've got a shock up your sleeve that if things don't work out as we kind of expect them to, not that they ever fucking do. But I feel like you've just kind of got something that you're going to pull out and everyone's going to be like, whoa. Well, I've not just been sat here fucking twiddling my thumbs, Oscar. Do you know what I mean? Like, But, no, but I mean it's something, not like, a, I don't know, be it a location of a fight, a belt, a weight, an opponent, just something that people are going to go, something left field. Yeah, well, I think sometimes, you know, to start getting things you haven't got before, you've got to start doing things you haven't done before. So... You know, you might see a slight different approach. You might see a slight different, you know, I don't know, who knows. But there is some hopefully big and exciting news. Because if there's not, I'm just going to fuck off and retire, man. You know what I mean? You don't mean that. But if I can't find no one, what do you want me to do? Just keep fighting Alvarado every time he gets made as my mandatory. Because did you see Did you see that, Oscar? Yeah, I saw that, yeah. oh, no, no, wait, so hold on. So I beat Alvarado on the 11th of November, or there or thereabouts, yeah? By about just halfway through January, he's been ordered as a final eliminator against Rosales, who my brother beat for the WBC World Title way back when. Nicaragua, I think they're sparring partners. They got ordered as a final eliminator back again for my belt at the end of the year. So really, I'm just going to keep getting Alvarado for the next three, four years if I carry on in this. Because um, I think he'll beat Rosales, probably, maybe. Um, and they had purse bids, and I think someone won it for two and a half grand. Two and a half grand I've seen. I don't know if that's just some Twitter from, but it seemed like quite legit. But then again, um, you know, maybe there's reasons why people aren't going into that fight. Yeah. Mad, we'll look, we'll look forward to it, whatever it is. Um, a couple of other things I want to get your take on. Um, maybe the left field thing is you stepping in April 29th for Wembley, because we're going to need someone. We're only five weeks out and it ain't going to be Fury Usyk. Well, did you see his call out? Who? Fury. Who's he called out now? Is this... In the last... Did you not see what he said about me? No. Something along the lines of a, a gap to for something, something <laughs> right. <laughs> I was thinking, fucking hell. <laughs> I've heard that one before. I was thinking in the last hour that Fury's going to call that someone mad at 19. No, 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 no. Um, I just did find it quite funny, though. Cause did you put blame on either Alexander or Tyson for why that fight didn't happen? Like, and obviously, I know there's a lot of people behind the scenes, but do you blame one of the two individuals? Do you really want to answer that, Oscar? Mm. I feel like you know the answer that I'm going to say. If I'm being real, you know what I mean? <laughs> I think it's obvious why the fight's not happening. <laughs> um, I think the fight's going to happen. I'll be real. I'll go out on record to say I think the fight's going to happen. I don't think it's ever going to happen on the 29th of April. 
I think I think this is a smoke and mirrors me, but I, I actually don't know. Um, it might be off. They might have upset each other to the point. I don't know. I just feel like that fight makes too much, generates too much, and sort of ties up everything. Um, but at the same time, like Uzik, man, he's good. Like, so I can maybe see why Tyson is being that that extra, you know, wanting the percents and wanting the. I don't know. I can't relate me personally. Um, one, I don't make tens of million pounds a fight. Um, and two, yeah, I've never really been in a position where the whole world's waiting for my move, I guess. Um, but I don't know. I, if I, if you offered me now the chance to fight with one or with three belts to complete the set, it doesn't matter which side I am, the fight's happening. Do you know what I mean? Because I just don't like the idea of someone else calling themselves the champ while I'm around. Like, it still bothers me to this day now. Kind of disgusts me a little bit. I'm perfectly I like that I'm number one across everything. You know, the ring, ESPN. I was gonna say you're I was gonna say you're very active at posting things that say you're the you're the number one. Like, I'm pretty sure I've seen you post a few times on Instagram, even just like the screenshot of Box Rick. You like knowing and having the status as I'm I'm the man and no one else is. And still no one asks to find me. <laughs> Anything else mind? Like, I, why do you think I do that, Oscar? Like I know To try and entice someone in, but it's not working. No. Like and does no one else see this? Like, is it just me that sits here like, what is going on? Like, but, I don't know. I have, um, I have a great deal of confidence that, you know, this frustration I won't feel for too much longer. Well, it's a thing across the whole sport, so, I don't know whether it will change, fingers crossed. Um, one more thing, the Conor Ben situation, I know you've been very vocal, so I'm not going to go down the whole, did you watch Hearn vs Jordan, who won tests, British Boxing Board, whatever. Just from your perspective, what fight would you want to see for Connor if we're going to take the three options as Manny Pacquiao, Kelbrook, or Chris Eubank? Um, honestly, makes me a bit sick that that someone has the opportunity to earn probably eight figures in the same year, same twelve calendar months they failed to drug test. Again, not personal. Don't want to be controversial. I'm not trying to make it about myself. Like last time I seen Connor, it was all cool. This was before all of that, but like, it's not. Like I've had to dedicate my whole life to get to this point. I've had to do it clean, Oscar. I've had to. I can assure you. I can promise you. My two babies, wherever they may lay their beautiful heads right now, I can pull it on their heads. I've never, ever, ever taken a form enhancing drug. Cut no corners. And I understand that if I was in a position where I'm saying that, but there's bad stuff in my body, I'd be infuriated at all the things I'm hearing. However, I know I've been drug tested about 30 times. I know they turn up all the time unannounced. I never sweat. I never stress. I never worry. And I've also passed every single one of them. So if, if I'm capable of doing that and being accountable for everything that comes into my body, why is there one other athlete that I have to walk in this dangerous sport that everyone wants to tell me that we're cared about as boxers? They want to say, no, no, we do care about you as boxers. We'll do this, you know, after your career, we'll support them. So I, I need to exist in this sport where everyone tells me that they care about me because I'm a boxer and I'm a world champ and I'm undefeated. And, but I've got to exist in it where people fail drugs tests and can loophole the life out of it. Like, it is what it is. I'm not the first, not the last. But, you know, I've heard narratives and they've come from, from, from one, one of them came from this channel. Like, and I don't want to directly point at no one because I always had to have a private conversation about it, but I didn't think it was about me anyway. But, the fact that we're talking about, can you believe people in boxing are, are mentioning? Yes, I can. Coogan, I can. <laughs> I can. I really can. Because not everyone has got the same friendship that you've got with him, or not everyone's got the friendship that you've got. So take away the personal that he looked at me in the eye and said this to me. Yeah, because I've been looked in the face, bare face, lied to. I'm sure I imagine a thousand times, probably a hundred thousand more times to come in my lifetime. People do it, especially when the back's up against the wall. But the fact that, again, like anything in this world that is a bit of a, you know, a soft topic, it becomes taboo. No one speaks about it. If anyone does speak about it, the people try and alienate them. But unfortunately, my voice can't be alienated. It can't be cancelled because it's not centred around nothing. It's not a part of a movement or agenda to, to help. Like, I've been a boxer since I was nine years old, Oscar. I'm 27 years today as I stand. 18 years I've been dedicating my life to this. So if I want to talk about, you know, in this interview, Conor Ben, in the interview I did five minutes ago, I mentioned Joe Gallagher. If I want to do that when I'm in boxing, I'm going to do it unapologetically when I feel I have every right to do so.
because I'm simply a commentator sometimes. Like, unfortunately, I'm a fan as well as a boxer. And when my fan hat on, head mixes with my, my boxer hat, and all of a sudden, there is just cleared, in my eyes, miscarriages of justices, personally. Things that aren't dealt with properly, there is no code of, code of order, no consistency. Like, for me, it, it, it sickens me a little bit, Oscar. You know that, we had that conversation three years ago. Um, and ever since I've had a platform, I've been, you know, probably one of the mocal, most vocal voices in the room, every room about it. People say, oh, I didn't, even, I didn't have a platform then. Every time it's come up since I have, I've been one of the first to talk about it. And not judge during execution, because I don't know. I can only say what they're telling us. But with the stuff that you've told us, the stuff you're trying to tell us, the stuff that you keep trying to tell us is going to come out soon. I don't know, it just kind of burns my head. But again, not personal. It's not even in my weight. So I don't actually really care about it. Like, it's just obviously, you know, if I'm going to get answer the question, I'm going to answer the question. But yeah, again, not even that personal. Because, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't write anyone off for any one thing that happens or does. So... No, I don't, I'm not writing off or saying that I even know what actually happened because I don't. All I will simply say is I've had to sign things telling me that if anything's in my system, I get banned. So why is there grey area? When did the grey area come? And where did it start? And when does it stop? Do you know what I mean? So are you of the position now where, like I've just asked you about what fight you'd prefer, are you in kind of the position now where you don't really want to talk, like I said, you kind of don't care in a sense, but you don't want to talk about the fight side of things when there's grey areas and other things to clear up, essentially. I don't care, to be honest. Like, I don't care if he fights a 44-year-old Pacquiao. I don't care if he fights a, a, a Kelbrook. I probably would most prefer the Chris Eubank Jr. fight because we were so close to it last time, I guess, I gather. But, like, I actually don't really care. I think... For me, there's always going to be a sour taste in my mouth when watching him fight and watching one of his old fights. And that happens for me personally. I, I, and I don't ask everyone else to do this. Like, this is just me personally. Like, I could sit here and name fighters. Don't need to. But any time a fighter has kind of had a clear, like... And it's worse. When, you know, if they get the two-year ban and they, and they take the two-year ban, they, whether they hold their hands up or not, but they go away and they come back, I can appreciate it. There's been some form of... This happened, cause and effect, ban, come back now, two years out of your... But you know them, them very particular cases when they just didn't happen to have registered their licence again or Vardo isn't whatever. Or, you know when there's the loophole, that, that's the real head burner. Someone gets slapped a two-year ban and come back, I don't care, they've had their time off, you know what I mean? Even if they were juicing the whole time in between it, who cares? You know what I mean? They, they, had, they, they had some time off, whatever. But they've been punished. But you know the ones that sort of just get to hop, skip, jump around? You know... Oh, we just went fighting in the UK. Let's go make more money in the Saudi. You know, like, nah, man, don't really sit right with me. And I know that might be controversial, but like, do you know how I know I'm weird, Oscar? Because I'll say things that I think should be quite like, do you know what I mean? Like quite common consensus. Yeah, that's that's probably right. Like, but then I'll just get absolutely hounded like I'm speaking a foreign language. Like, I just think if you get caught with something in your system, you do the time. No, no excuse, Soz. Like, make sure... Like, see me, Oscar, you won't see me drink a bottle of anything, water, anything. I've not opened myself. Not a, not a single thing. Most of my food is cooked for me by my nutritionist. Why do I do that? Why do I be a bit more... Why do I make sure all my supplements are batch tested and that I don't source them myself, my nutritionist does, with the, the batch... The, 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 so then I can... Here's my evidence. Here's the receipt. If it ever comes. But guess what? I've got a pile of 30 drugs tests sort of green papers where they write on it and it prints a little bit underneath, like, under paper underneath, so I haven't got to do it twice. I've got about 30 of them. And zero articles saying I've had a drug test. Fuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I, I never shot, shot up, Harry. Uh, must have been about 17, 16, 17. We need their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day, 